Hey, this is Bargain Bin Book Report, where we read discounted books no one else was brave enough to read. I'm Lauren. And I'm Louise. Welcome, Welcome to, to Book, book Club. Club. Welcome, Welcome back. back. <laughs> Today we're reading Before I Let Go by Marike Nijnkamp. Yes. And so we'll go ahead and start out with all of our trigger warnings. So we have um, suicide, child neglect, possible murder, mental health, mental and physical abuse, medication abuse, romanticizing mental health, ableism, and cult-like behavior. There's a little of everything. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a, <laughs> it's, I wouldn't say it's a bad book, but it's a, it's weird. It's intense. Strange. 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 Very, very <laughs> strange. But we'll go ahead and get into, do you want to read the back of the book? Yes. Okay. We have the actual book with us this time. It's very exciting. I know. It was originally ten ninety nine. Uh, we did not pay ten ninety nine. <laughs> no. Uh, Corey and Kira didn't fit in with anyone else in their small Alaskan town, but they fit together. So when Corey's family has to move away, she makes Kira promise to stay strong during the long, dark winter. Except days before Cora is set to visit, Kira dies. I said Cora. It's Kira. Corey. Corey feel like I'm you should start losing over. it. <laughs> I'm just, okay, I'm just going to start over. <laughs> Except days before Corey is set to visit, Kira dies. Corey is devastated and confused. The entire community speaks in hushed tones about the town's lost daughter, saying her death was meant to be. They push Corey away like she's a stranger. Corey knows something is wrong. The town of Lost is keeping secrets, chilling secrets that will lead to a difficult truth Corey never saw coming. It doesn't mention anything about bipolar. No. That's like the whole basis of this book. That's insane that we pick. We didn't even know that it mentioned bipolar. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we'll go ahead and jump into the characters. Because speaking of bipolar, Kira has it. And she has it really bad. She's the she's the the girl who's now dead, and she's like tried every kind of medication. She's tried therapy. She's done everything, and she still has really really wild manic episodes. Yeah, and she's the person who the town has basically deemed as like a hero, and that's why they're saying like her death um was like foretold because. They believed in her mania. So she is basically the false prophet of the story. Yes. And then there's Corey who comes in and she's like, y'all are all batshit crazy. So, but she was Kira's best friend and she had to move away and she comes back and the town all now like well, see she her was, as like outsiders. She was already planning to come back. Yeah. But then like the day before or two days before... She finds out Kira had passed away. Yeah, her mom calls her and she's like, guess what? Your friend's dead. Yeah, because Corey is now at like a boarding school, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but then In Winnipeg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then um, we have Mr. and Mrs. H, which are Kira's mom and dad, who just go along with all the batshit crazy stuff, you know. As per usual with teenage novels, um, the parents are just neglectful and terrible. Well, but so, dad's way more into it. I don't know. The mom's kind of... The dad is way more aggressive, <clears throat> but the yeah. mom keeps, like, all of Kira's paintings. Kira painted, like, a painting of her death, and her mom keeps it in the house. I think the way the mom is is more like she's attached herself this way because... It's like it's, grief. Yeah, like, it's a grief thing, and, like sort of like a brainwashed thing but the dad has more of a financial he does reason he, he does but it's still like a weird delusion because his financial reason is still based off of believing the things that she says in her manic episodes yeah um and then we have the sheriff who basically 
you know, just wants to hide everything. Runs the town. He runs the town. He basically influences everyone. And then we have Sam, who's the sheriff's son, and he doesn't really come into play until later. Yeah. Not super big, but kind of big. Um, and then we have Miss Morton, who works in the post office. Always a post office. Always a post office lady in the murder mystery novels. I yes. don't know why. <laughs> and then she is Piper's grandmother. And Piper yeah. is just some bitch in town. <laughs> when I say bitch, I mean bitch. No, she's awful. Yeah. And then we have... Um, Mrs. Robinson, who's only mentioned a couple of times, but it's kind of, she's kind of like brought up a few times. But yeah. she's just an old lady who has a community garden. Yeah. She's very sweet. And then there's Roshan, who is like just a new kid in town. And his dad. Oh, yeah. His dad is there for oil investing. No, for it's mining. Like tungsten. Mining of something. Yes. Heavy metals. Yeah. And then there's Aaron, who's a 70 year old dude who lives in the fucking woods. We. Did not know he was 70. I thought he was, like, mid-40s. Yeah, this is our second time around reading the book. I thought he was much younger, too. Yeah. And I was like, he's fucking 70 years old. No, he's Living off the land. Building model aircrafts in his fucking cabin. He lives in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I don't know, man. Either way. So, to start out the book... Um, it starts with Corey being in her new, like, boarding house at her new mm-hmm. school, St. James, and she gets a call from her mom and finds out that her best friend is dead, and it's a suspected suicide. Yes. But it's weird, because she had gone under a frozen lake and drowned. Yeah. So, like... And they were trying to yeah. tell her that she did it on purpose. But even when Kira had promised Corey, like, she would wait for her. Yeah, like, she was literally supposed to be there in, like, two days. Yeah, and somehow she committed suicide, like, right before her best friend is supposed to come back. Yeah. Yeah. But then this is also when we're first introduced to the fact that Kira has bipolar. And everyone saw her as an outsider. Yeah. No one was nice to her no. until she died. A lot of the flashbacks are just people being like, well, that kid's a freak. Yeah, they called her, they constantly were calling her crazy. And people were saying that, like, they needed to send her away to, like, a residential area. Like, like just ship her away to a, like, a mental health facility. Um, Assisted living just somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and this is also when we're introduced to very similar personalities as the first book that we read. Yes. Where Kira is the storyteller who has wild dreams and Corey um, <laughs> likes astronomy and she likes physics. I think at one point it mentions that Corey is the only person who likes physics in her town. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> but... No, because uh, Kira's whole thing is she really likes lore and, like, legend and storytelling, but Corey's more of, like, a hard science uh, astronomer, too, I guess. I mean, I guess it's kind of... At least it's not real gods in her head. At least we know it's a manic episode. <laughs> at least we know it's crazy. <laughs> at least we know it's crazy. Um... But, but so, or is it? Or is it? Yeah. Is it? Shit is stupid. <laughs> but um, I don't... That's the thing. Is this book really does romanticize mental illness. So if that's something that's going to like... Like it... It just made me angry while I was reading it. I think it there were so three sad. or four times in my notes where I just wrote, I hate this <laughs> in all capital letters. Because the way they romanticize bipolar is... But then they don't romanticize it in the same way. It's like... I don't know. It depends on what part of the book you're reading. Um, But Corey decides to go alone to go back to her hometown for the funeral because I guess her mom has to work Mm -hmm. and her brother still lives at home. He's like five years younger or something. Yeah. Um, And when she gets on the plane, this is like the cheesiest part of the book, but she gets off of the plane at her old hometown and the pilot says, 
things aren't always as they seem. No, you missed the whole part, though. Oh, what? What did I okay, miss? When she's on the plane, she sees a little girl. And the little girl was, like, humming, yeah, like, the song. A yeah. song that Kira used to sing to her. And then there were just, like, flowers everywhere. There are and flowers, then she looks though. over again. And the girl's gone. Yeah, and there are flowers that are supposed to be, like, not growing during this time. Yeah. And, like, I I did miss that. I think I didn't write it down because it was, like, a stupid. And yeah, I no, I just wrote it. flowers, all capitals. I, was, I and... like your drawing. It's cute. Yeah, and I drew something. <laughs> I don't know what these flowers look like. I didn't look it up, but they're, like, salmon yeah. berry flowers. But when she gets there, Corey is greeted by Piper, Who used to really fucking hate Kira. Like, she was one of the people who would make fun of her. And she would be friends with Corey as long as Corey wasn't with Kira. Yeah. Um, and... So a two-faced bitch. Yeah, because Corey is now saying how well-loved Kira was. And that the town has changed and that things have changed. And there are flowers everywhere, like, in Mm -hmm. the town, too. Even though they shouldn't be since Kira's favorite flower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is magenta and black. She's emo, apparently. Yeah. So <laughs> and ribbons everywhere in the town. Yeah, like magenta ribbons, because magenta was Kira's favorite color. Yeah. Um, and Corey, while she's here, Piper basically walks her to, I think she walks her to Kira's, to Kira's parents' house. Yeah, because they couldn't come pick her up. Yeah. So they have, there's basically, there's like two separate houses. It's kind of like a mother-in-law suite situation. Yeah. Where Kira's uh, room and like the guest room were. Yeah. So Kira's room is completely closed off because her parents, I guess, just wanted to keep it the way it was. Her grandfather used to live in that side and then they renovated it and then so she moved in there, but they locked her room after she died. Which I don't know kind of makes sense because I would do that too. I don't think I could walk into a room after my kid had died. You know what I mean? Okay, but to me it doesn't make sense unless they knew Corey was still coming because they didn't want her to go in there because it's a whole separate house that they, they wouldn't knew Corey go was into. coming yeah yeah that's why i think they locked, they the locked door. it yeah um but they're also so first she goes into like the main part of the house and is talking to the mom and everything and there are pictures of kira everywhere and like her art is everywhere and her own parents like kira's parents never used to have pictures of her up on the walls. And some of the pictures were ones with her in it, and she's yeah. been cut out. Like, Corey has been cut out of the pictures. Yeah. yeah. It's like the mom, like, literally, like, photoshopped her like, out, of Corey out of the pictures. Because now Corey is seen as an outsider. This is where the, the cult thing really starts to begin. Yeah, I know we sort of, like, made it seem like we blew the big secret in the beginning but it's like very obvious it's, from the start. it's also yeah like the first page it's like um not the first page but in the first chapter kira's mom has a painting that kira did of her own suicide yeah. or of her own death like kira had basically they think that she was like foretelling her death and that yeah. it was destined to happen because even the mom says like it was her time yeah. And no one ever says it's her time for yeah. a suicide. No, that's... Awful. And she seems, like, at peace with it, and it's weird, and she's like, well, you know, a lot it was of people, just the time. But then it's sad, because a lot of people do seem at peace once they commit suicide. Yeah. And that's why it is sad, because a lot of the time that you read, like, suicide letters, or you hear accounts, it's like, they were the nicest that they've ever been, they were super sweet... Like, they had been giving things away, and, like, they seemed happy. And when a depressed person suddenly seems happier, that's that's bad. Most of the time. Especially a bipolar person. Yeah. So. But that was all a facade anyway. Yeah. So, well, not a facade that Kira was creating, but a facade that everyone, like, around her was making it out to be. Yeah. She wasn't happy. No, she was not. Um... But then we get a flashback. This is the first of many flashbacks um, to, to when Corey and Kira kissed in the garden. <laughs> Kissing. Yeah. And basically, Kira Kira was gay and Corey was not gay. Corey was like, I feel nothing. I'm asexual. Yes. She didn't and, realize it at the time. but She didn't realize it at the time. She was like, oh. Well, no. I think she says, like, she didn't have interest in boys or girls. No. She felt nothing. And then Kira was like, I'm pansexual. 
Yeah. But Corey wanted it to be a thing yeah. because she saw everything else. And she's like, this is the best way to, like, keep my friendship. Yeah, because she says something about not knowing if just a friendship can last over, like, 3,000 miles. Yeah, like when she moves away. Yeah. Um, but her dad, because her dad walks in and doesn't even, or Kira's dad, she's at their house. Yeah. Um, but Kira's dad Flashing walks in. Flashing back to the Flashing present. Flashing back to the present. Um, Kira's dad walks in and just seems happy to see Corey and starts talking about opening up a mine in Lost Creek and like, no, no, nothing sad, you know? And the, sh- the sheriff, um, is there too. Well, first he's talking to Miss, uh, Miss, Mr. Saren, who seems sort of nice. And yeah. he, when he talks about Kira's death, he's like, oh, I heard you were a really good friend to her. And I'm really glad, you know, yeah. it's sort of sad that this happened. I understand. He's a little more optimistic about it, but yeah. like closer to a normal reaction but than the parents. But he still also says like. Kira belongs here. Like, we're so sad about it because Kira belongs here. Yeah. But Kira hadn't belonged there. Plus, he just moved there, so she's like, that's weird. They had been treating her bad for so long. Yeah, like, the entire time she was there. Yeah, so Kira did not belong there. They kept saying that it was her time and inevitable, and that's, like, a theme running throughout the book. It's, like, the inevitability of their death. brings it up, that's all they say. Um, this is another book where children and teenagers just get to go into pubs. Yes. <laughs> Apparently that's a common theme in murder mystery books is children just go into pubs. Yes. Um, <laughs> but so she goes there and she runs into Piper mm-hmm. and a boy who is Rashawn. This is the first time we're introduced to him. He's new in town. And um, Piper tells Corey to walk around Lost, like, to walk around the town and see how the town has changed. Because Corey's still really confrontational. She's like, dude, I want to like, fucking what know what mean? happened. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, when she goes in there, she's like, okay, but, like, what happened? And then Piper's being, like, super dodgy about everything. Again, this is why it's, like, a cult where it's kind of, like, you know, sometimes you watch cult videos and it's, like, they seem at peace with, like, crazy shit. Yeah. Where she's, like, you have to see, like, how it's changed. Yeah. You have to see the hope in everything. Yeah. Like, it's just some bad shit crazy just stuff. Because they're f- – and um, Piper also says that Kira foretold – things in her paintings and she shows her a bunch of paintings around yeah. town like of flowers and mines and just predictions yeah of things that would happen uh kira had been painting like people's families mm-hmm. um she painted a picture of Corey coming back to town on a plane and piper being there but this is also when she's walking around town she sees a painting that Kira had done of the yeah. whole town. Like a whole and of, big mural. Yeah, and of the mines coming back and everything, mm-hmm. of the of it being prosperous. But then Kira is in, like, a lake, and you can only see the shadow of it. Yeah, she's But there's the shadow dead of Kira dead under the lake. So what the town sees this as is Kira has to die for the town to be prosperous. Yes. Which is just... Sad. Fucking insane, too. It's just... It's yeah. really depressing. You see this depressed girl thinking that everything would be better without her, basically. Like, yeah. that's kind of the vibe that it gives. It's like... Yeah. You don't paint, like, a whole town being happy and then you dead in the background yeah. when you're at peace with things. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. going back to... She goes back to Kira's family's house to have dinner, and that's when the sheriff... And her dad are talking. And then she tries to talk to the sheriff about it. And she's like, hey. The fuck? <laughs> and he just says the same thing. It's still just Kira. Yeah. Belongs here. It was foretold. That's like all anyone fucking yeah. says. And he's like low-key telling her, like, drop it. Everyone, everyone is. Everyone's like kind of aggressive with her whenever she brings it up. Like and she's Piper's like very aggressive really, with her too. Yeah, she's really upset because like every time she's talking to these people, she's remembering how close she used to be. Like the sheriff used to be like 
her mom's best friend and he was like a pseudo dad to her when her dad like left and Corey is almost not being allowed to grieve at all for her friend because no. everyone else is so happy yeah that she's literally not allowed to grieve yeah and then when she's upset about it they're like She'll gaslighting her and being yeah. like like what do you mean no she was it was her time why yeah. are you like upset about this but then also Corey is hearing these, like, crazy whispers everywhere, like, while she's yeah, trying yeah. to sleep. And Maybe. it's that song that comes back again. What is yeah. it? It's something, 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 come to steal your soul away. It's a very creepy song. Yeah. It, endless night, endless day, come to steal your soul away. Yeah, and she just keeps, like, hearing it everywhere. And, like, and people she's in hearing, town like, are whispers of it. her names. So, obviously, Kira used to sing it. Yeah. Um, but it's just super creepy maybe Corey has some undiagnosed problems who knows <laughs> i feel like that's a reasonable thing to think that you hear stuff when you're back in the town where your best friend just died yeah maybe i don't know well also this book has a supernatural feel to it undertone it's like it's like the the other book the school shooting book we don't we haven't done that one yet we haven't done yes. it yet but yes there's a book that we've read that's very similar. I feel like yeah. a lot of a lot of authors do the thing where it's like supernatural but not really supernatural. It's a pretty common theme. It's like to make you question everything but without actually putting that much effort into Poor it. writing. But um, when she's hearing stuff and everything, she decides cause she starts hearing stuff from Kira's room. So she decides to sneak into Kira's room to see like what the fuck is up. Yeah. And when she walks in there, all There's of... just, like, a random trap door into her room. Yeah. Her closet. Yeah. Um, but all of Kira's curtains had been cut to shreds, and there were shredded paper everywhere. Her books had been shredded. Yeah. And Kira, like, those were her prized possessions. Like, her, her grandfather books, gave her Yeah. Those. Her books of stories from her grandfather, her books of, like, lore and mythology and drawings were all just totally shredded plus her room looked like it hadn't been lived in in like months yeah there's there's dust everywhere so she obviously hadn't been living there and she finds um a letter from kira saying that like she's scared and she's yeah. still she's still waiting yeah for, for her to come, back. to come yeah um but i guess the next day after this because she kind of just like scurries out of the room after that yeah Corey's she, like fuck that you know Walks says, to town. She walks to town, and uh, this is where she visits Mrs. Morton in the post Guess office. Guess where? The post the office. The post office. Because there always has to be a post office always lady. Always a post office. An aggressive post office lady. <laughs> Who apparently used to be nice to her, but now she's a bitch. She's, like, low-key ignoring her. Yeah. Uh, but um, when she walks into the post office, she notices that uh, Mrs. Morton's late husband... Um, his desk had been cleaned off mm -hmm. and Mrs. Morton had kept his desk that same way for like years and years and years, but it yeah. had been cleaned off. And now there was a portrait of him like hanging up above his desk. Um, and the portrait had obviously like been done by Kira. Mm -hmm. So and it sort of like aged him up. It aged him to what he would have been, like, now with yeah. Mrs. Morton. Or, like, the same age that he would have been now. So, Mrs. Morton, who also, like, kind of low-key didn't like Kira to begin with, was, was talking about her, like, oh, she gave me this such this piece with this um, portrait. Because now I it feels like does... he's living with her. And I'm like, that I'm... I can kind of understand. Yeah, I can understand that. Like, especially if you see it of, like modern day yeah. like I could see that like of someone who passed away but also the piece was like it's again like this cult thing yeah. like Kira gave me the piece it's not just the painting gave her the piece it's Kira yeah because they see her as like a her, godlike figure because they keep talking about like her gift yeah her gift to the town and her gift is all of these paintings yes. that she does because when she's in her manic episodes she paints that's all she does. But a lot of the hobbies that you develop during manic episodes aren't your real hobbies. No. A lot of the times, it's insane things. Yes. You know, because it is insane. And Kira probably, in the beginning, did think that she was telling the future. Yeah. Because she hadn't come down from the mania yet. Yeah. Um, but 
yeah, everyone's just crazy. Yeah. And this is where we start seeing that real hostility towards Corey. Mm -hmm. Because Corey takes a cookie and is like, oh, I hope you don't mind. I took a cookie. Like, um... I hadn't like, eaten breakfast this morning. It would have been a completely normal thing for her to do back when she used to live there. And Mrs. Morton just, like, says mm -hmm. something. She's like... She's like... <clears throat> <clears throat> and then, like, goes on to talk about Kira. Yeah. Um, and this is where we get, like, another flashback um, to when we really start... Kira start... We start to hear Kira talk about her disorder yeah um which is pretty frequent throughout the book i like i do like that we get the first hand from kira yes. about the disorder but her therapist um was like suggesting mood stabilizers and this was after we find out more about her first manic episode later yeah but this is like after her first manic episodes and Corey asks if kira would miss the energy from her mania and i feel like she kind of like snaps at her because a that's bit. such a bad question to ask yeah because mania can make you feel it's it's hard because when you're in that mania you feel like a totally different person and it's kind of like you are fun you do make more friends you do have more hobbies so it does start to feel like um, um <laughs> but it does start to feel like do you miss yourself when you're in your mania or does your mania feel better than like being your normal self and it kind of turns into like an identity crisis type thing yeah because you can make friends easier you are more creative you don't sleep you have more energy but also that crash comes where you yeah. haven't slept for a fucking week and you're going insane but there's also sometimes that like self-hatred of like why did I act like this? Why am I doing this? Or even this is just, inappropriate. Or even just why can't I have this much energy normally? What's wrong with me? Yeah. So mania almost always turns into self hatred, which is why with bipolar there's that manic depressive because yeah. the depression basically comes from the crash of mania. Yeah. It's like coming down off of drugs because it is you're going from a euphoric high to like. And that's what mm. Kira explains to Corey, and then Corey feels like shit. And she's like, <laughs> Corey's like, oh. Well, I guess that's when she really starts to like accept how Kira is and understands that her mania isn't her. Yeah. And though she'll help her out through those times, which she calls her hero days, you know, she'll help her out through it and she won't like judge her for what she does and sort of like guide her through it in a safe way well yeah she lets her do all the crazy things but safely mm -hmm. and with her because mm -hmm. i feel like that's what you have that's what you have to do yeah um but also when they were having this conversation this is where we're first introduced to the spa yes which is an old abandoned spa right next to the hot springs because they're in like a mountain town yeah i guess this is apparently a very poor description of alaska from yeah. what we've read online um, but there are hot springs, like, right next to this abandoned spa, because their town used to be, like, a tourist town. So yeah. the abandoned spa is where they used to hang out. Me and I wish I used to hang out in abandoned buildings. This sounds cool. Oh, I did at my dad's house. It was, it was pretty cool. My dad had an old school house on his property. <laughs> okay, but that's, like, a house where you own. Yeah, it was, but it was cool. It was cool. It's not a felony and trespassing. <laughs> oh, yeah, felony trespassing. So fun. Yeah. Um, Why didn't we do more of that? There actually did used to be an old abandoned house in a town that's kind of close to us. And, like, we all went and took our senior pictures there. Yeah. No, like, no, fucking no, weirdos. Right next to the do not be here. <laughs> yeah, you're super not supposed to be there. And when I went there... I climbed up, you know that sketchy staircase that's in it? Yeah. I went up that staircase and I sat in the window in the top thing. <laughs> I'll have to show you the pictures because they were really good pictures too. And I was wearing like a fancy dress and heels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went to the top thing and I was like hanging halfway out of this window of this broken ass house. <laughs> and there's a picture of like a bumblebee like flying into my face because there was like a bee's nest up there. <laughs> like... But everyone from our high school took their senior yeah, no, pictures. I, I took pictures there, too. In a fucking abandoned building. There were two abandoned buildings. Wait, yeah. there was that really old one. And, and then the, like, there was the, the one. Thing. There was another thing called the art house where everyone yeah. used to. It's called the art house. Everyone just vandalized it. Yeah. But it was, like, good art. Yeah. They changed it. Now it's, like, a fucking winery. Yeah. And they. You, you can't go in there anymore. They, like, tore down the house to make, like, a little kid's park. 
I don't like it. I, I liked know. our I liked our abandoned house. <laughs> how, dare, how dare we make sure these children don't actually get tetanus? Yeah, don't jump off of a, <laughs> I jumped down from the top. Because <laughs> it's not that high. Like, it's a second floor, but it wasn't high. Yeah. Um, But uh, going back from our tangent. Yes. Um, <laughs> this is where we learn that, because after the spa is introduced, Corey figures out that Kira had started to live in the old spa and was using it as an art studio. Yes. Um, and... She also flashes back to her life at her new boarding school where she was getting letters from Kira, but she like kind of felt so guilty about getting out of Lost that she couldn't reply to the letters. Oh yeah, this town is called Lost Creek. Yes. But she didn't reply to the letters cuz it was almost like you would love it here. Like there yeah. are books you everywhere. You should be here. You should be here with me. Cuz uh Corey always talks about how she never really wanted to leave Lost. She wanted to stay there and she knew but... she would never Kira Stay always, away. Kira always wanted to leave. Yeah. Um, but we kind of learned that Kira and the town had bonded mm-hmm. through Kira's art. And Kira had been taking painting requests. And um, no one had tried to stop Kira from doing anything. Because, yeah. again, there were multiple paintings of her death. Yes. So, yeah. Everyone is just fucking crazy. Um, but basically, they were seeing Kira's paintings as, like, the future. Because yeah. she did sometimes paint scenes that were realistic. But yes. I feel like that's just because she knew everyone really yeah. well. We talked about this, like, before we started the podcast. She was very intuitive. She was intuitive. And also, I imagine, because people weren't talking to her a lot, she had time to watch everyone. Because she would just go into town and draw. Yeah. And, like, so she had time to see everyone. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And you keep flashing back to, like, Corey talking to her. And it's a lot of Kira just saying, I hate when I'm painting. Like, I don't like that I have to paint. Because the thing is, is she gets to where her thoughts are going so fast that she doesn't even have time to write it down. Because she likes writing. She likes writing stories. Mm -hmm. And she feels like she doesn't even have time to write anything down. That she has to do paintings. Because she can't even form the words. She only sees them in her head. Yeah. Because she would rather be learning about stories. Talking to people about stories. Writing her own stories. Rather than painting. And painting is just something she does when she's like desperate. To get everything to out. To get the energy out because it's either painting or like running away into the woods. And because she has to do something. Yeah. Um, and this next flashback we get is to where we talk about Kira learning stories from her grandfather. And Kira and Corey had gone to the lake to like dance with scarves um, and like look at the stars and everything. So Except Kira runs out with like no clothes on and. Corey's yeah. like, here, put on these clothes that I brought you. Yeah. Um, but she also mentions that she wouldn't sleep at all and was also depressed at the same time. Yeah. So she was having these crazy mixed episodes. Mm-hmm. And mixed episodes are like the most uncomfortable part of bipolar. Because you have this crazy energy in your head, but no motivation to do anything. And you like fucking hate yourself. But like with even more passion than depression because Mm -hmm. you have so much energy from the mania yeah so it's just like hatred yeah and mania and it's like just desperation because there's also that self-awareness of that you're not being socially acceptable also you're not that aware in mania like sometimes you can be manic and like you're not aware yeah but when you're in a manic like a mixed episode you're aware yeah. that, like, the shit that you're doing is crazy. Yeah. But you can't stop yourself. Yeah. Sorry. I We we know a lot about the topic. Um, a little bit. A little, a little bit, bit. too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, her therapist suggests, like, sending her to residential. And she brings yeah. this up to Corey. And More just kind of like a rehab to yeah. bring her to a baseline. 
Yeah, because also you can't just be – her therapist wants to test new medication. Mm-hmm. And you can't just have someone who – because bipolar is also really affected by medications and mm-hmm. stimulants. You can't just have her trying a bunch of new medications at home because, yeah. like, it could actually send someone off the deep end. Yeah. So, but Corey wants for Kira to go. Yeah. Corey wants her to go get better. And I think this is where Kira mentions, like – I don't know, Kira, it's kind of like a, she's like, I want to get better, but I still want this to be, like, me. I want everyone to accept me for who I am. So, Kira really also wants to get better. Yeah, because she's very conflicted. She doesn't want to go just because, like, the town's trying to push her out, but she also wants help. She wants to go to get better, but she doesn't want everyone to think that she went because she's crazy. Yeah. She wants to go to feel herself again. And it, she is seeing a therapist, and she is trying medications, and though yeah. the medications aren't helping They'll as help much her as a she bit. wants. It seems like she has, like, really bad rapid cycle bipolar, yeah. because she doesn't seem to have a lot of downtime, yeah. which sucks. Um, but also, I have a grammatical thing to complain about. <laughs> All right, listen. I wrote this down, like, five times in this novel. Every time she says, like, they snuck out, she says, sneaked. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that, but it'll be, be like, we sneaked out. Or, like, I sneaked. Instead of just snuck. I snuck. It sounds so much better. I hate when people say sneaked. Well, I was looking at It the, sounds bad. I was reading the audiobook, so I don't know if they changed it or not, because I didn't pay attention I don't know. That. Yeah, because I think I started listening to the audiobook. I listened. I did about half and half. But in the yeah. book, she writes sneaked. And I'm like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> like... Did no one revise this book? Was it, like, an artistic choice? But it drove me insane. Well, she's also... She's young. But she's also super smart. She wouldn't say sneaked. (laughs) Well, I think she's, like... I don't know if... I don't want to be rude, but she's, like foreign and i don't know if the like oh that english is her first language whatever no one edited it no (laughs) no one fixed it for her maybe her i don't want to say that but like i don't know much about that might be the issue but it still drove me fucking insane yeah um but um then we kind of flash back to the present and this is where we're introduced to Mrs. Robinson. Yes. Who the is old like lady. the old lady who has a community garden. And is actually genuinely pretty sweet to Corey. Yes. Like she's not like a total bitch. But um, it's also because she's like ninety eight and she doesn't yeah, she's give a old. shit. She don't she don't give a fuck. But Mrs. Robinson's garden is in full bloom despite the winter. And um the reason that, that happened, despite the fact that it's in full bloom is Kira said that they didn't need to prep for winter. And she made a whole painting. Yeah, she made a huge painting of the garden and said, you don't need to prep for winter. It'll be fine. Which is something someone who is manic thinks that they have control over. So she's in a manic episode, but also she has magic powers. Okay, but Miss Johnson keeps saying that ashes make the best fertilizer. Yeah. And I don't... Does that mean they put Kira in the garden? No, it doesn't mean they put Kira in the garden. It means that... Well, they can um, bury her. No, 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 no. The ashes is... It flashes back to... Or it flashes to... Corey's house has been burnt down. Oh. Uh, yeah. I forgot about Corey's that. Corey's old house that she lived in got burnt down. But Kira had painted the garden and now somehow... So Kira really does tell the future. But also it's a manic episode. So I'm like, what are we trying to portray here? Like... This is where it starts romanticizing bipolar. It's weird. Because it's saying, like, she wanted to get better, she didn't like this, she hated painting, but also she literally did tell the future. Yeah. But it also talks about later how she could smell when the weather was changing, so I don't know if she just... No, because she was in a manic episode then, too, and she's smelling, like, hope, and she's having this euphoric high, basically, that is the manic episode, but she and can tell happens. the future. So that's where it's romanticizing it's weird. bipolar and it's romanticizing mania. This is like if we listen to fucking Kanye, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Kanye's God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has the song about it. Yeah. Um, 
But moving, <laughs> not, moving try, not trying to get too edgy here. Um, we get another. But wait, 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 wait. Small tangent. They never tell us where Kira's body is. Did they just leave her under the ice? Yes. Because that's what was in her painting. They I'm, just left her body under the ice. I'm making a shocked face. <laughs> yeah. Because these people are batshit crazy. They didn't want to move her body, I guess, because that's how it was in the painting. Was her shadow was always still under the ice. That's fucked up. I don't know what they're going to do when the fucking ice melts. And, like, her weird Her gross... body's just there. Her oh. bones are there. Her gross bloated body just yeah. floats up. Oh, my God, yeah, because the lake is basically... It's, like, so cold under there. I wonder how, like, the decomposition process would work. I think it would just, like, stay frozen, and then once it heats up, that's when it'll really start to... That's disgusting. That was my only thought this whole book. I'm like, what did they do with her? Well, thank you for bringing that thought up to me. I'm sorry. I had not thought about it, (laughs) nor did I want to. Um, But we had a flashback to um, Kira and Corey again. Talking about Kira's in love with Corey, and Corey doesn't feel the same way, but Kira's kind of like, that's okay. Yeah. I can be in love with you, and you don't have to be in love with me, and we can still be we'll still friends. We'll be friends. Yeah. It's really sweet. It is really sweet. I can... I feel like in any other, like, weird young adult novel, that'd be like a big friendship after, like, our first book. She's like, how dare you be lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> The great titty suck. The great titty okay. suck. Okay, but um, <laughs> this podcast is going to get fucking meta. <laughs> just, um, but flashback to, like, present time, we start talking about, I don't really remember why Corey's dad left, but Corey was left alone a lot, like, yeah. with Kira, because her mom is a nurse, and she was a travel nurse, so she traveled a lot, and Corey's dad had just left. And the brother was hanging out with... Well, the brother was, like, ten. Yeah, but he had his own friend. He did. It was Piper's younger brother. They yeah. would hang out. His, I think his name was Tobias. It was. It yes. was Tobias because I thought about the guy from that show with Jason Bateman. Oh, <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. Someone's going to know what I'm talking about. My husband will know. <laughs> um, but... So, Corey's kind of just walking through town, and she goes, because she goes to look at her old house, because she did used to live there, Mm -hmm. and it had been, like, burnt down, and I think on it, it said, like, it is, not it is what it is, or maybe it was it is what it is, something like that, because there was, at some point, they were just repeating that over and over. I think I blinked that whole part out. Yeah, because Corey's house is just burnt to the fucking ground, so, um, Corey then walks back to, um... The spa. Yes. And she sneaks in there and um, basically sees that um, Kira had, like, written all she over finds, the walls. She finds, like, the room Yeah, Kira she was finds the room in. Kira was living in and she had written all of the walls, like, I can't breathe. Help and they're me. watching, like, all over the walls. So it's, like, super fucking, like, it's like, disturbing. Corey, come. Corey, come. Yeah. Like, I'm waiting for you. Because Kira didn't used to paint people from Lost. No. Her paintings used to just be, like, I think she painted a lot of, like, landscapes. Yeah. Like, a lot of scenic things. Um, But now she's painting people from Lost, which is really fucking weird. Yes. And there's one part where um, she had written down, like, the light goes on forever and my mind won't stop. So she's, like, stuck in this, like, hypermanic state. Yeah, well, also, the light in Alaska, like, well, we don't know how accurate it is. Yeah. Apparently, it's super not. The but way, the way it works in this book is there are weeks where it's not dark. But apparently, where she is in Alaska, that's just not, or apparently, that just doesn't happen in Alaska. I don't know. I don't know. People on the internet complain about it, but, um, but, like, Kira hates when, when it's, it's always bright. Well, because when it's always bright, you feel feel like you're always manic almost Mm. i don't know like i hate when sunsets happen at 9 (laughs) p.m i hate it because i feel like it's like two o'clock in the afternoon the day is too long the day is too long yeah um but yeah um but she finds out her parents had been um 
withholding. Like, I don't remember if she found this out from talking to her parents or from, I think it was from a letter that Kira had written where well, she, she finds out a that. Journal yeah, she found hidden. the journal. And this is where she finds out that, like, her parents had been withholding Kira's medications. Yeah. Because they wanted to keep her painting for the yeah, town. Because Corey comes and confronts her parents. Yes, when she and, goes back yeah. to the house. So her parents wanted her to paint, and they're like, when she's on her medication, she didn't paint. Which is so fucked up. Yeah. Because, like, that's, like... That's the only reason the town accepted her. Yeah. And when people are bipolar, they do have more creativity. Talking about Kanye again, he's like, yeah, my medication stifled my creativity. So I talk. But sometimes when you create something, when you're in a manic stage, it's not even fucking good. Or you don't even like it. Because sometimes yeah. you'll come out of a manic state and be like, oh, that was batshit crazy. But, like, they don't allow her to do that. <laughs> they have, like, they're basic. One second, sorry. Um, but I don't know. Just like, why didn't I buy they all want, this? They want, to, <laughs> they want to keep her in her mania. Yeah, no, they, like, kept bringing her paints. They kept bringing they her They brought food. her food. And they were basically have her pa- having her paint 24-7. But it's cruel to keep her going through... All of to keep that. her going through that. And then her parents were saying, oh, well, it was cruel to keep her going through the ups and downs of the medication. And it's like, Kara wanted to find a medication that worked. Yeah. Like, she was we desperate. mentioned, but when Corey went into the spa, it was basically kind of set up like a church. Mm. Like, all of the flowers There was a, what do you everywhere. call it, a shrine. Yeah. There was a shrine for Kira up there. And her paintings, there were candles everywhere, there were ribbons everywhere. Like, people were going... And there were no books. Yeah. Kira was not allowed to have her stories. No. That she was passionate about. So, basically, her parents were... Everyone was fueling her mania. Mm -hmm. That's like constantly giving an alcoholic a drink. They were making sure she wasn't sleeping. They were making sure she was painting and that she couldn't do any of her coping mechanisms to calm down. Yeah. So they were literally keeping her crazy. Yeah. Um, because Kira hated to paint. But, Mm -hmm. you know, um, but the conflict ends like relatively shortly. Basically, Mr. H just cuts Corey off. He's like, nope, fuck off with that. Yeah, he basically says we, because, like, this is right before, this all happens in the span of, like, five days. It's very whirlwind. Not even. Because yeah. she was supposed to only stay for five days. This is still on, like, I think this is the second yeah, this is or third like day. Day two. Because this is when they have the memorial service. Yeah. And the dad is basically like, we don't care if you're there. Corey, yeah. you don't have to be there. You're not important. Say he calls her like an outsider. Yeah, you're again. an outsider now. We because don't care. In this town, it's basically it's a literal cult of like the whole town. It's mm-hmm. only two hundred people. Yeah, like that's like a college class. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they go to um the fucking memorial. the memorial, and Piper comes to talk shit, and then everyone is talking shit about Corey. Yeah, like it's literally, and they're not hiding it either. They're saying, like, she's an outsider, she doesn't belong here, she yeah. wasn't really a friend of Takira. And Piper comes up and is like, 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 why are you here? Like, like her parents, like, low-key say that they're happy Kira's Kira is dead. dead. Because, and Corey, when Piper comes to talk to her, Corey fucking slaps her across the yeah, face. Piper, Piper is, is like, she's a bitch. She's hardcore shilling this juice, you know? Like, she's pretty deep in it. And so when she keeps, like, spouting all this nonsense to Corey, she just has enough and literally slaps her in front, in of, front of everyone at this memorial. Um, but when someone, I don't remember who, but someone went to talk on stage and they started it was the exchanging. the post office lady. Yeah, it might have been Mrs. Morris. Morton. Morris? I just said it. Morton? I so just fun. said it. I have it written down. Wait, wait, wait. Miss Morton. Um, but she goes up to talk. And is telling stories about, like, the paintings and everything. And then they had this chant that they would do with Kira that was, like, yeah. they would say, tell me, or she would say, tell me a story. And they would say, we will obey. Yeah. This is where I wrote, definitely a cult. Yeah. This is when you just see how hardcore. Because people would come in and offer her things. And she would say, tell me a story. Before she would do, the, like, do a painting for them. Yeah. And they would say, we will obey. 
Yeah. Like, that's so fucking scary. I could see how she was scared because, like, they were turning her into a cult leader and she, uh, like, unwillingly. Like a prophet. Yeah. This was more of a sermon than it was, like, a memorial. It was a sermon, basically, for Kira being God. Yeah. Um, But um, I think afterwards, Piper apologizes to Corey. And, um, she's just like, I know you don't understand. Yeah. She's like, I know like, you it's don't not understand. a real apology. And then Corey's like, you don't believe about Kira. Like, you believe that you do. But you fucking never did. You no. can't suddenly just say that you do. So Corey goes up on stage yeah, and is she like. she just, like, yeets up there. And, and she's like, like, y'all are fucking stupid and insane. Yeah, and then Aaron, the old man, he's like, oh, you, you get off the stage, get off the yeah, stage. Yeah, and Aaron comes up and is like, she's we, right. We failed her. Yeah, Aaron comes up and is like, she didn't want to be doing this. We failed her. We didn't stop her from dying. And then everyone gets massively pissed. I think the sheriff even tells her to, like, get the fuck out. Yeah. So she has to, like, run. Well, Aaron runs, too. But they have to fucking run through the woods. Yeah, they, like, because escape. Because it's, like, a mob type thing. Yeah. Um, and Corey goes back to the house to get her shit. But she doesn't have her passport. Because that's, yeah. like, with. She um, gave it to the parents. because so she's she like, wouldn't lose it. They'll keep it um, safe. And she's... the fucking house, like, the mother-in-law suite gets lit on fire. Yeah. Like, she's, like, trying to just, like, sleep. And she wakes up and the whole thing's on fire. Yeah. And so she has to jump out, like, a fucking a window. window with, like, smoke in her lungs. And she she's like, okay, it'll be okay. People are going to show up to put the fire out. We don't have a real fire station, but, but people, people have always showed up to help. Yeah. And she comes out and the people are just standing like there. Like, the whole town. And a mob just watching her. And yeah. no one comes to help her. So she just, yeah. like, and fuck it. Mr. H pulls out because Corey had taken one of Kira's scarves. Yeah. Because it meant a lot to her. That was yeah. when we had the flashback about them dancing with the scarves on yeah. the lake. And um, Corey had taken it, and Mr. H pulls it out, saying, basically, like, you took this. And we knew you were in her room. Yeah. And so Corey runs, <clears throat> and she gets to the spa to seek refuge. Yeah. She is, like so terrified to even go to sleep that yeah i would be too yeah the mob basically tried to kill her but this is when we get a flashback to kira's first manic episode yeah and her first manic episode was her running out into the lake in the winter saying i want to go swimming with no fear of consequences and it was clothes on no freezing fucking cold yeah like it's like the ice is a little broken but that's the type of things people do yeah when they're manic because You really do just, you want to do what you want to do and you're going to do it because you don't really, there, there's no sense of consequence like in your mind. It's kind of like a a four-year-old with ADHD. Yeah. My four-year-old to jump off of tables. Little (laughs) sociopaths. Um, But that's literally like, that's what a manic episode is. You don't, your brain doesn't even think. Like, it's like you don't have a brain because it just doesn't. uh base instinct it's very woo. (laughs) i know that's awful to say it that way but it is very like woo. um oh she also ran away and jumped off of roofs yeah she broke her ankle oh my gosh she did some wacko shit um yeah yeah, and this is where um her i didn't remember that part but her manic episodes impacted her pretty much worse than the depressive ones did yeah and my heart just hurts for her yeah. With that, because she has it bad. And I have a friend who also, he just. Yeah. Man, sometimes he calls oh, she me also when went he's in the, crazy in the woods. End. Yeah. She People ran do. off in the woods. Also, oh, she's young. And this is even so young to be diagnosed yeah. with bipolar. Usually people don't have it happen until they're 20 yeah. at least. And so the fact that she had it this young, it must have been like. Bad. super bad and super painful to go through especially because you usually don't get it until you're 18 where your brain is more developed and i can imagine as a teenager it would be worse because you're so impulsive emotional. and you're mm-hmm. already like emotional with all the hormones racing through you and hormones impact bipolar yeah so i can imagine it makes it worse brains are stupid brains are so stupid Either way, she wakes up after, like, falling asleep from exhaustion. Flashback to the present. Yeah. 
The sheriff is just staring at her. Well, she's sleeping. And he brought her food. He brought her a roll. He brought her multiple <laughs> rolls. He, he brought her rolls. Um, and he came... The first thing he does is, like, investigate the fire from the night before. Allegedly. But he it's very even, cold. Yeah, he doesn't even really ask her how she's feeling. And then he's like... You need to come see the doctor. He Let's was like, go. you would have gotten help if you didn't run off. You know, they were all literally staring at her. Yeah. Um, so uh, he drags her back to, like, the doctor. And he even tells her, he says, you're not one of us anymore. Yeah. Um, and the doctor isn't there when she goes to see her. And so she has to wait. Like, hours. Hours. And she doesn't even see the doctor. Yeah. And so when she comes back to the spa, um, everything's everything's gone. Yeah, they all of the paintings are out. gone. Oh, this is where she finds the journal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, she hadn't found it yet, but she found letters. She had found letters she did, earlier. She keeps um, finding letters or other things that wasn't sent to her. Because I guess her dad would probably, or someone would read the letters before they sent them. them to Corey. Yeah. Because all of the letters are saying like, "I want to get out." Um, I'm waiting for you. Come back. She for finds. Me. She finds the journal because everything else has been just wiped out. Yeah. And she finds the journal, um, like, hidden in, like, a nightstand, like, little thing. Yeah. Where they used to hide chocolate. Yeah. Which is very cute. It is cute. Um, but the first entry states that they're happy that she's accepting her and that she moved into the spa. But then the second one states how the townspeople were only seeing her art and she was starting to get scared. Yeah. And that she hadn't slept in, like, days. Yeah. So she goes from being, like, elated and able... Well, because that's another thing with bipolar, is you think you can do all these things. Yeah. Is it's like, oh, I can paint for everyone. I can do this. I can do that. And then once you've done it for long enough, you're not really in that super high mania anymore. Mm. You're in the spiraling part of the mania. Yeah. And, and then it's, it's like... You're just burnt out, but you still have all the energy. Yeah. So she's just burnt out, but she can't stop painting yeah it's so sad um because then the third letter states that they took away all of her books and her stories and she also writes about how Corey hasn't been answering like any of her letters yeah and she's sad she's sad but she's still saying like she'll wait for Corey. yeah uh, she's like i know you'll even, still come back she even me. says maybe it'll be easier to write knowing that they'll never be read like, about the letters. Because she starts mm. writing letters in this journal, not even meaning to send them to Corey. Yeah. It's basically just, it's easier for her to write in that way than mm. to write, like, a journal for herself. It's easier to yeah. write to Corey. Um, but the people, it says, like, the people brought her things, not friendship. And the townspeople drained her of all that she had left. Very sad. We are getting to the end of the book. Yeah, it's a very, it's actually a very short book. Um, yeah, we're on like day four now. <laughs> yeah, it's not too long. How long is, oh my gosh, not as long as the last book. The last book was, I didn't remember it being that long. It's like 400 pages, but I feel like it's a fast read. Maybe yeah. it's just because. All the chapters oh, are like two pages. Yeah, it's, it is written with that like urgency. Yeah. Um, I guess we could talk about that later. We're still doing the plot. Yeah. But it is really written with urgency, which I like. The writing yeah. is good. Yes. Um, but we get another flashback to um This is the the first painting. Yeah. Wait, what? Um, like you get a flashback of like the first predictive painting she did. Yeah, yeah. And it was of Corey's brother holding like an injured bird and that happens and Piper sees it because normally Kira would like throw away her paintings. Yeah. But Corey kept this one. And Pipe, so Piper is basically the one who started all of the yeah crazy shit. Yeah. Uh, but also we flash back to them talking about like, do you believe in God and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And Corey's like, I don't believe in God, but I believe in you. And Kira says, do you believe in me or in my manic episodes? Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it is hard. Because when you're manic, you're also more friendly. Well, yeah. in the beginning, usually more yeah. friendly, but also more fun, more energetic until you get angry at people. And then yeah. eh, it's bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
but it's also slightly yeah. confusing because a lot of the flashbacks are also different points in time yeah they're like, not written in like any sort of order it's either like two years ago or like yeah. a few months yeah. but like, kira basically views it as kira hates her mania yeah. but Corey seems to love it kira doesn't like the energy but Corey seems to love it but i don't i think that was from kira's point of view because Corey's yeah. like dude i just want you to be fucking happy and healthy yes yeah yeah, at the end, there's a lot of flashbacks, though. There, there is. Yeah. Um, oh, here's a quote that I wrote down that I liked from this. I'm more productive because I'll burn it up, or I'll burn up if I'm not busy. Yeah. So basically, like, she'll just go literally fucking insane yeah. if she's not, like, painting or doing something productive. It's like a little chihuahua that just... It is. Vibrates. It just has to, it has <laughs> to burst. It has to. Yeah. Um, so then now we're back to present time. And um, Corey goes after Aaron, like, to look for him. Yes. And she notices that it looks like he hasn't been living there in a long time. And, like, everything looks, like, This is abandoned. also really weird to me. It is weird. I don't really understand. I think it's trying to parallel Kira's room. Yeah. So I'm guessing he had been living somewhere else. Yeah, but, like, this happens a lot with Corey first visiting places where she's, like... And I don't really understand why. She sees everything as very desolate. And then by the time she visits there again, she feels like there's life there. Yeah. I don't, I don't really know why. I don't know if that's trying to parallel, like, Kira's moods. Like, this sort of depressive mood and, like, yeah, not being there. Well, I think it's to, also like, parallel. Not parallel, but it's also representing seeing things as they truly are. Yeah. Because um, that's one of, like, the main things of the book. So I think yeah. it's really... She hasn't been there in so long. So yeah. I think she seems ever sees is seeing everything as kind of old and desolate. Yeah. And then she's kind of brought back to reality when people have been living there and that have been going on without her. Yeah. That's kind of what I got out of that, but it's still weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird thing. Like you have to you have to you have to dig for it. <laughs> Which is fine. It's fine. Um yeah. that's why I have a lot of just journaling that I did for this book <laughs> because like it would just be like weird shit that if you don't write it out you like don't really know what it means because like you had to dig for shit man for half my notes are illegible <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah um but like she's hanging out in the hotel well yeah, there's I'm also to find... a flashback of that's what I was thinking. I thought this was a flashback, but I didn't give myself my normal, like, star that I put next to it for a flashback. Yeah. So I got, I got confused. <laughs> yeah. No, she's, like, hanging out, or Corey is hanging out at the spa, because that's the only place she knows to go. Yeah. And Sam comes to visit her at the spa, and that's where we learn... Oh, and Roshan. And Roshan. That's when we learned that they were visiting Kira... And just, like, they knew she was lonely and she needed a friend. Yeah. But they didn't really do much to, to help, help her outside but of But they that. also didn't believe in, like, they kind of did. Yeah. But they didn't believe in all the crazy. Because Sam even mentions, I came here because she seemed lonely and I guess mm. we could be lonely together. Yeah, because a lot of Sam's personality is that he never smiled and he always seemed unhappy. Yeah. But when he was friends with Kira, that's when he kind of started to open yeah. up. And Sam came to see Kira, not because she would do paintings for him, but yeah. just to be to come there. visit. Yeah. Yeah. And Sam mentions, because he had had a lot of time to talk to Kira, Sam mentions Kira would have left if she could have. She, like, she tried. Yeah. Um, because he mentions that, like, Kira was telling stories and mysteries of, of like, labyrinths. And, like, when they were in school, she had a project yeah. that they had to do. So she's been having these episodes. Like, since she was, like, 13. Yeah. Because even with a school project, like, she was having depression. And doing these projects on, like, stories and myths made mm -hmm. her depression easier to cope with. Yeah. Which is, but that's common for bipolar, to have the yeah. depression and then not have a manic episode until later. a little bit later. Um. Also, here's another thing, which apparently is inaccurate from Alaska. They're sitting at the hot springs, and they can see the northern lights. Yeah. Apparently, for where they're at geographically, that's not, like, a thing. 
Honestly, I don't know where they are geographically. I don't either, but people online bitch about it. Yeah. So we don't really know. The, the people from Alaska apparently know. I don't. Know. We live on the East Coast, the farthest. Place uh, yeah, away I'm from Alaska. No, no fucking clue. <laughs> um, but um, we also get like a little flashback to where Kira and Corey are talking about the Northern Lights, and this is yeah. like the mythology versus science thing. Yeah, where Kira's like the Northern Lights are there because of the gods, and Corey's like, "Not, nah, bitch. It's because of like fucking gas in the sky." <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're like arguing but like fun arguing yeah and Corey's it's like kira knows how to push all my buttons yeah um but that's like Sam... when i be purposely ignorant to you and then you get mad at me i know oh because i'm also the science nerd yeah i i am i'm who was the one from irene yeah. I'll be Irene. I'll be Irene. I'm George. Those are our Discord names. Yes. Um, but, so, I got lost. Um, but, oh, wait, this Sam, you... oh, wait, Sam starts talking about how Kira tried to escape, but Kira's dad would have never, he, never let her. Her parents basically kept her there. Yeah. And, and, and her she ma- only went to the spa with Corey to escape. Yeah. So she was stuck in her, like, fight or flight mode. And in her mania, she was talking about hope and seeing things as beautiful. And this is where she predicted an early spring, and it came true. Yeah. And I wrote, this is one of the parts where I wrote in all caps, I hate this. Because it's romanticizing mania. Yeah. And I can't fucking stand that. Because how does the author go from saying, like, she was feeling awful and terrible to, like... But then if she's feeling awful and terrible, why is the author making the mania... Like, true fortune-telling. Yeah. I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand what her purpose was there. She can smell the spring. Yeah, she can smell the spring. And, like, it's like you can't say that she was going through these terrible manic episodes and have Corey's point of view where it's like, no, she wasn't really fortune-telling, but then she is. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's just, it's contradictory. I'm not a fan of it. I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> But then, flashback to the the present, and Corey wakes up, and the gay boys are sleeping together. (laughs) So Sam and Roshan are in um, a relationship, and we find out that's why Sam is so happy. Yeah. That's probably part of the reason he wanted to hang out with Kira. Kira set him up. And also, there's a painting... Yeah, there's a painting. Of the two of them together. That predicted, but that predicted this very moment. Yes. And it predicted them sleeping in the exact same way that they had been sleeping. Yeah, there's like a few differences, but it was Again, Kira's a fortune teller, but also her mania was literally killing her, so. But also, I feel like it's just weird fanfic shipping, but real people. Like Tina from Bob's Burgers, yeah. What, what does she make? Uh, I have never watched Bob's Burgers a day in my life. I hate American so animation. <laughs> I love Bob's Burgers. Tina's so funny. Uh, f- oh, she calls it friend fiction. Yucky. She makes like fan fiction of her real life friends. Yeah. And it's weird. But we get another flashback. And it's when Corey and Kira would walk to school. People would be like staring at them. Yeah. And like talking shit. And like. Even if someone doesn't have mania, they're going to have, like, a fucking outburst at some point if people keep fucking looking at them like they're crazy. If you keep calling somebody crazy, eventually they They're going to act crazy. Yeah. Because you can't just keep pushing people away and, like, forgetting about people's problems and ignoring them and expect them not to get pissed off. Yeah. Like, I would get so pissed if people were being mean to me. Man, I was mean to people in eighth grade. Yeah. I dressed like the an emo kid in eighth grade. I did. Yeah. There's a reason people bullied me. <laughs> <laughs> but I still would get so mad. Like, people would say shit to me in the hallway and I'd be like, flip them off. <laughs> like, oh, I'd fight people for you. That's good. I would. I pushed someone to a locker in, like, eighth grade because they were talking shit about one of my friends. <laughs> Not fun that. times, fun times. Yeah, I yelled at a group of boys once. They would be like, oh my god, look at look at them. And I was like... They're so mean. I was like, excuse you. People were so mean. We did dress like weirdos. You dressed like a fucking 
I don't lumberjack. know. Lumberjack. <laughs> I think a lumberjack is a good way to describe An it. Emo lumberjack. And I was just. I wore literal like. If anyone knows who Black Veil Brides are, <laughs> I wear Black Veil Brides makeup to school. I would say sometimes you low key look like you were wearing trash. <laughs> <laughs> I think I deserved the bullying a little bit. <laughs> My jeans were so ripped that, like... One thread. One thread. <laughs> one thread of jeans. And I would wear a tight white shirt and black skinny jeans every day. And I had a boy haircut. <laughs> yeah. My mom would tell me, are you really going to go out like that? You look like I don't give you a home. And I'm like... <laughs> My mom would say that to you. My mom would be like, you look like a boy. And I was like, fuck you, mom. <laughs> it's not a thing. Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Going back to the book. That was a small, small emo tangent. Um, but after that, I think we flash back and we find out that um, Corey is like, fuck this. I'm getting out of here. Yeah, because she goes back to... Ro- yeah, Roshan and Sam volunteer to help her. Yeah. And this she, before she goes back, Sam is like, you should go back to the Hendersons and talk to them. Well, she also goes to see Aaron again. Not yet. That's after. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Bam. <laughs> this is after. She goes to the Hendersons and goes to look for her passport, and it's in a safe. And the lock code to the safe is the day that Kira died. It also seems weird to me that they, like, this happened, like, a week ago. Like, they had to, well, it's a cult. It's a fucking cult. Like, her parents are in on the cult. Yeah. And um, while she's here... She, she also finds a letter from Kira that she hadn't, like, read yet. It was, um, like, a stack of letters. Yeah. But her dad there was, was one hiding. specifically that was in the safe. Yeah. Um, but Mrs. H ends up coming home while she's there, and she tells her, she's like, you're not welcome in Los anymore. She's like, you and used to be a mother to me. A mob approaches her, like, outside. Yes. Like, a mob fucking chases her around. And screams at her, like, get out, her, outsider. Go home. Forget. Go home, forget, forget. Go home, forget. They're literally, like, chanting at her. Yeah. Um, And so she goes, I think she goes, she goes back to the spa. And um, and she reads um, the letter. And the letter is, like, she wants to sleep. She's burnt out. And she wants people to see her for her. Yeah. And that's, like, continuously in Kira's letters. Yes. This is where she runs back to Aaron's house. Yes. <laughs> well, she asks Aaron if, like, anybody ever tried to help her escape and he was talking about like no she had plans to leave and she tried to leave yeah um but as soon as she was trying to leave to get on a plane and her dad fucking dragged her back to the spa yeah like would not fucking let her leave because these people were so deranged and her dad was so deranged that it was like if kira leaves i won't make my money the town won't be prosperous anymore yes so, this is when we get to how Kira really died. Yeah, a mob. A mob basically meets her. They um, chased her out onto the lake. Yeah, they chased her onto the lake. And because she was running across the lake, she mm-hmm. fell through. Yeah. And no one went to help her. Aaron mm-hmm. saw it happen, too. Yes. Aaron saw it, and by the time Aaron was there to help her, she, she was, was already, already dead. The entire town watched her drown watched her just like how they watched Corey. it's Mm -hmm. a cult it's a mom thing and it's just they had to have a what's the word for a martyr yeah a martyr basically she had to die so that the town would be successful yes because if they didn't fill the prop fulfill the prophecies and the other ones wouldn't the other ones wouldn't come true yeah so and then um yeah, it basically says they wanted to save her legacy. They didn't want her to believe because she had helped the town so much. Yeah. Um, and her last letter to Corey that she had written is talking about her being her best friend and about how she felt intensely happy. Intensely happy. In- is that the right word? Is that how you say that word? Intensely? Yes. It felt wrong. Um, but so she's super happy, <laughs> but also very exhausted. So she's yeah. in another one of those mixed episodes where it's like, She's still super happy and euphoric, but also just fucking tired, man. Like, and I think at that point, it might not have even been mania. It might have just been the fucking yeah. sleep deprivation that she was being put through. 
Mm-hmm. So then um, this goes back to when she tried. We got a flashback back to St. James. And when Corey, it's kind of what we talked about earlier, but when Corey tried to write letters to Kira, she couldn't write about her new friends and about how she liked St. James and about how Kira should have been there. Yeah. And that's why she didn't answer any of her stuff. So we flash back to the present and (laughs) Mr. H comes up and is like, I'm going to fuck you up. Give me the fucking letters, bro. Yeah. So he comes up and like literally tackles her to the ground and tries to choke her. Well... Rashad or yeah, Rashad saves her. Rashawn. Rashawn. Rashawn saves her first, and um, but then the she, dad like, comes she goes back. taking off into the woods. Yeah, but the dad comes and like catches up with her, and it's like you held her back from her true purpose. Yeah, and you start choking her. Yeah, he starts choking her, and, and she... he's like, "I can make it look like an accident." Yeah, and she like. She tries to run away again. He she grabs like, her ankle. She, like, rage, like, I'm not gonna die. And then when she, like, sort of comes to after being choked, he has a knife. Yeah, and he's threatening to cut her and let the fucking wolves eat her. And he's like, no one would know it was me. I'm gonna pose it as an accident. And she's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? So she gives, because he had come to get the letters back. Yes. And so she has to give them to as him. As much as she wanted to keep the letters to preserve kira as who she was well, she, i think probably go to the cops in her yeah. hometown she didn't want to die so, so she gave him the letters she and, just yeets them into the yeah. woods she says yeet and then she runs so fast yes um then we get another flashback <laughs> again every yeah. other sentence is every, a flashback. it really is the last the last part of the book it's so many flashbacks and um she starts talking about how when she's manic she's scared that she'll hurt herself or someone else yeah so um she starts saying like don't forget to be afraid because when she's manic she forgets to be afraid and that's when she do the crazy shit but the ending of the book is just she just gets on the plane (laughs) she gets on the plane and she just accepts that kira's story will stay in lost and because that's all she really can do and then she starts in the last chapter, is writing her version. Like once upon a time. Yeah, writing her version of Kira's story. Is that what it says? Does it say? I think so. I think it does say, like, once upon a time. Oh, no, the end of the book is just a bunch of questions for the author. Oh, there's also, I just want to mention the back of the book, I guess, because it's so triggering, has um, the suicide hotline. Yes. And the Trevor Project hotline. Wow. Yeah, she... <laughs> I didn't oh, get to that part of the book. <laughs> that's wild. But yeah, it does end with Once Upon a Time. But, sad book. Pretty you, good. You want to read the ending of the book? No. <laughs> I was just seeing, because she does the acknowledgments, I was seeing if there was anything worth. It's just some questions for the author. I skimmed through it, but I didn't... What do you help readers take away? None of it was very interesting to me. No, it's not good. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I thought that there would be something, but I guess okay. we'll jump straight into analysis. Okay, I've been waiting to say this. Yes. I feel like when Kier painted herself under the ice, it was going back to when she had her first episode and she ran out. I think so, too. Into the wood or into the lake. It's also mania tends to be a lot of the times like full blown mania is you kind of get the same symptoms more than once. Yeah. And so I could see how that was absolutely like that's what she but, did the first time. That's what she wanted to do again. But, but also you develop more control. Yeah. So I could see her like you're not going to like especially since she had gotten like health and therapy. So she was probably painting instead of actually going out and killing herself because painting mm-hmm. was her coping mechanism. Yeah. So she probably did want to run back onto the ice again, but she painted to cope with it. So that is mm-hmm. telling of the young girl had developed coping skills. Yeah. She wasn't hurting herself. She wasn't doing anything crazy. She was mm-hmm. painting. She wasn't fucking hurting anyone. Um, I don't know. I don't think anything supernatural is happening other than... I don't think so either, but I just... The way that it's written is poorly portraying mental illness, I feel like. Like, some of it's good and some of it's not. I don't know. It's weird. 
it is. It's just weird and it's contradictory again. But this book also kind of talks about a lot of it is, is someone their disorder? Yeah. Because it's hard to see someone outside of their disorder, especially with bipolar, because you're never consistently getting the same person. Yeah. And that's hard because obviously you're going to want to be friends with someone more when they're normal or manic than when they're depressed. Or maybe not. Maybe you want not shit to do with someone when they're manic. Yeah. But they're still the same person. But not really because it's like, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's like living with three different people. You have mania. You have depressive. Well, then you have the hypomania. And then you have the mixed episodes. And then you have normal. And it's like, at some point, I feel like it gets hard to determine what normal is. Yeah. It's just really hard to tell where that baseline is. It is, because you never know. Because sometimes you wake up and you're like, I'm happy. And it's like, is it normal happy or is it crazy happy? (laughs) And then it's not until, like, the middle of the day where you're like, oh, no, this is... (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, But I feel like a lot of this book is also um, fate versus, like, coincidence. Yeah. And I do feel like, especially with what I just read, like, a little bit of, like, the author's note, she doesn't want it to be supernatural. It is just coincidence. And these people, this is where the cult comes in. Like, forming of a cult from coincidence. Yeah. Because they do see her paintings and they're like, they just don't have hope. And I think that's another thing is the townspeople don't have hope. Well, the town was slowly dying. It was. And so I think they needed to find hope in something and so they had to form a cult, basically, to give themselves hope. I mean, it's understandable why it happened, I guess. But it's not acceptable. No. No. Like, in a very isolated yeah. town. And then I also wrote um, Inevitability on here, which is basically, like, the same thing. Yeah. Because I feel like... I don't know if Kira ever would have made it out. I think... I don't know. Honestly, I think if Corey had even gotten there sooner, the same thing would have happened. The same thing would have happened, except for Corey probably would have been killed, too. Yeah. I feel like at that point, because Corey had been gone for, like, ten months. It was too deep. No, it seems like this had been going on for, like, too long for it to really come back from there. Even if Corey had come before they died, or before she died, Corey probably would have ended up dead, too. They were willing to kill Corey to preserve their profit, basically. Yeah. So, just sad. Um, But yeah, the whole book is just an overwhelming thing of searching for hope where there's none. Yeah. It's a sad book. And there's not really, it's not even bittersweet. It's just, like, the book I feel like tries to end on a sweet note. Yeah. But it's not, just solely for the fact that there's not shit that Corey can do about it. Yeah. So. I will say I like this book the second time. I did too. The first time. Um, I think that the first time I read it, I didn't really know what bipolar was. Not really, like, deeply. Yeah, so I read it this was, book, like, five years ago. So it was hard. It's also harder to read it as a teenager. Yeah. I think we were, like, 18. Yeah. But it's still harder to read it when you're young and you don't, like, know a lot and you're just like, ha ha ha, silly, this shit is crazy. Because I feel like we used to read a lot of books like that that we didn't understand. Yeah. But also I felt like you could pick up a lot more, like, the second, subtle things. The second way through. Like, just the creep. I feel like this book was more creepy. Yeah. The second time around. Because you could really pick up those, like, well, cause the tension. N- knowing... What happened to her? You can see the tension really... in the in the characters. I feel like if they put that in like the beginning of the book, I think it would have been that yeah. would be more impactful. Yeah, because it is significantly more impactful the second time you read the book. Like knowing that. Yeah. So if like, it had kind of, you know, those books where like it tells the end, like the first page is yeah. the same as the last page. Yeah. I think that would have been a good way to go. Yeah, because I think if there was like a, because part of the book, like towards the end, turns into like a sort of like a play setting. Like it does. her life isn't really her life. It's just what's being played out. Yeah, it's kind of like Truman Show type. Yeah. Things. If um, 
Maybe it was like that at the beginning with more of a graphic description of what happened to Kira. I would have liked that too. Yeah. And you could have, because you could tell from the beginning that the town was like a cult. Mm-hmm. If it would have started off with a mob at the lake, yeah. I think that would have been good. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I think a lot of the suspense really comes from knowing what happened. When reading it, it the second time. Yeah. It made me way more uncomfortable. Because, like, reading it the first time, I was just really confused. I think that also comes with accepting and knowing more about, like, mental health, though, too. Yeah. I guess it was like, I don't really yeah. know why this lady is doing this stuff. <laughs> you know? Yeah, at first it was like... Because I didn't, we didn't know anything about bipolar. So no. it was like, what the fuck? Why is she just crazy? But now <laughs> it's like, you kind of know more yeah. about those intense feelings. Yeah. Because if you've never known a person with bipolar, it's hard to like actually understand mm. what the fuck is happening. Because it is just, it does seem like people are just like, woo, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. But the thing is, is they really don't have that control over their brains. They don't want to do that. <laughs> they don't want to do it. Well, even it's like while it's happening, it's like if you've ever seen someone have a psychotic break. Yeah. But imagine having like five psychotic breaks in one year and then lasting for two weeks at a time. Yeah. And then crashing into depression. It's like going through acid. <laughs> I'm not even kidding because it's like going on acid like – Five times a year. It's like you have these really high highs and really low lows. Yeah. And it's just, at first, you kind of even think it's funny. Because it's, like, weird. But, and I feel like I was kind of, like, humored by the outlandish things that happen. And now the outlandish things are just sad and depressing. Yeah. So, if you read this book, read it twice. Yes. Also, I feel like this is the first episodes the cats have been in the room and they have not tried to destroy anything. They're being so quiet. It's been like an hour and all three of the cats are just napping. They haven't tried to eat anything. Hopefully we won't jinx it. They haven't tried to break things. They haven't screamed into the microphone. Yeah. They're being good. Yes. But I think now we can go ahead and jump into our questions. Yes. All right, so most of the discussion questions were absolutely god-awful. But they, they weren't bad, but they were definitely <laughs> they written. Were too, they were written for elementary schoolers. Like middle schoolers. Or middle school, but also some of it was like, write a letter. It was obviously for like school assignments. Yeah. So we found some and, and wrote one of our own. Yes. So. We'll see they how this goes. <laughs> might have been by the author, though, so... They were on her website. They were on her website. But our first discussion question is, do you think Corey is partly or at all responsible for what happened to Kira? Why or why not? I don't think she's responsible. I don't think she's responsible. She's young. She's 15, 16. Yeah. That's hard. She didn't respond to her letters, but she still planned on going back to yeah. see her. Um, I think she should have responded to her letters to be a good friend, but that still doesn't make someone, no one is responsible for a death besides the person who directly caused it. And no one is responsible for a suicide, you know what I mean? But if we want to play the other side of it, if she did respond to her letters, that may have made the town not feel like she was an outsider so much. It might have. It might have helped, given her, like, a a little boost. But I don't think that Kira had really told anyone. Oh, but it's a small town. Yeah. Where it gets around that letters go out and nothing nothing comes back. back. I mean, like, they probably all wait for the mail plane to come in. Yeah. You know. So I can imagine that didn't help either. But I think also, like we said earlier, either way, the town was already seeing Kira. That's crazy. But also, she could have come back to visit sooner mm-hmm. if she was reading Kira's letters about. But also, a lot of the letters that Kira sent out was just like, hey, how are you? But she also says she was writing her real thoughts in, like, coded messages. Yeah, she never directly tells Corey how bad it is. Because she can't. Because people are reading her letters before she yeah, sends them out. Yeah, so I feel like if 
Corey actually read her letters because she, she was gone. saying she didn't even open any she would have caught well she didn't open like all of them she only yeah. opened like one or two yeah she would have gotten the urgency and i feel like Corey would have found a way to go back sooner yeah and i think that could have helped but i don't know if it would necessarily once people are in that cult mentality i feel like Corey would have been kicked out either way well if she thought it was like a little more intense than it was yeah. she'd probably make her mom go with her too though probably her mom should have gone with her anyway yeah after that's someone's weird. friend dies they shouldn't be forced to just go back with no family. Well, her mom's yeah. like, just come stay with me. I know yeah, I haven't mom, been around a lot. Her mom but... was encouraging her not, I don't think we talked about that, but yeah. Corey's mom was encouraging her to just not go Not back. to go to the town, which yeah. I don't like either. I think that yeah. was fucked up. I think Corey did as good as she could with the information that she had. That's yes. kind of how I feel about it. She's young. Yes. I don't know. Do you want to read the second question? Uh, Are we taking turns or do you want me to do it? You do it. I do, You like when I'm the question reader? Yes. Okay. Our second question is, when Kira and Corey talk about belonging, Kira tells Corey she doesn't want to be loved despite her illness nor hated because of it, but she wants people to respond to her for all that she is with all that she is. What do you think she means by that? I feel like that question's a little self-explanatory. <laughs> it is. I feel like it's exactly what it says. But also, again, it's hard with bipolar because yeah. your illness is kind of part of you because the way that you act, that's what people see you as. Yeah. And it's not her fault. Um, I mean, but even with medication, it never goes away. It never goes away. You still have... And sometimes medication can make it worse. Yeah. Or medication just stops working. Yeah. Um, I really think that... It's hard because you want to be seen for who you are without the mania and the depression, but those are strong part of your yeah. personality. Are strong, and that's hard. That's why bipolar is so difficult. Well, she was really trying to find a way to have a baseline. Yeah, she was, and she was trying to find out who she was, really. Yeah. And her stories and everything that she was, that's what she wanted everyone to see her as. But it's hard for everyone to see you as that when it seems like she was rapid cycling into mania and depression. So she wasn't having a lot of baseline days. Yeah. So I think it was hard for people to see her as who she wanted to be seen as. Yeah. But that's what she wanted. She, I think she secret like with that, it's like she kind of wanted to know who she was too. She wanted to have more baseline days. And since she wanted that, when they started pushing that more and more, that's who the town wanted her to be, so that's who she wanted to be. It's kind of like a people pleaser thing is kind of what happened. Yeah. But that's not what she, what she wanted. No. Um, yeah, but I think it means what it, <laughs> what it says. Yeah. She wanted to be seen as... A whole person. A whole person, not just... Her parts. Her mania. Yeah. And her depression. That's the thing. She, I like that. She wanted to be seen as a whole person. Yeah. Like that she's still a person despite her struggles. Yeah. yeah. But our third question is, on the topic of hero days, Kira says, we fight fear itself and we win. What is she most afraid of and how does she fight against it? What are you most afraid of and how do you fight against it? I think she was most afraid of actually losing herself. Yeah, she's... Yeah, I think so, too, of, like, losing her mind. Because she mentions a lot just, like, not really knowing what's going on. Yeah. And also going from those high highs to those low lows. Like, of literally feeling like she's a god. And of people treating her like she's a god. Yeah. To crashing. And I think that's, like... And she was afraid of hurting the people around her. Yeah. She mentions that, too. So, she was definitely afraid of her, her illness. She was also afraid of Corey hating her because of her illness. Yeah, because Corey was the only one who didn't judge her. So she was afraid of losing She that. was afraid of losing Corey. Yeah. What are you most afraid of? I don't, that, I don't know. Life. <laughs> I think I can feel the same, the same vibe. As you get older, you, like, change. And I'm, like, kind of scared. Like, what if in the future people don't like me? <laughs> I kind of get that same thing. You know? Mm -hmm. But also, people are just, like, unpredictable in general. So it's kind of like one day, what if one day my friends all hate me? 
I like my husband divorces me. I think that's more and of a And then my paranoia. mom dies. I know. I get that way sometimes, though, where I'm like, I am afraid of it, though, but I don't yes. see it really happening. I cope with that through meditation and yoga. <laughs> and that's not even some bullshit. <laughs> and coloring books. I don't think I've really discovered my coping skills yet. Some of my coping skills are bad, but most of them are okay. <laughs> yeah, my coping skills right now are in development of doing a lot more grounding to sort of bring myself back to, like, what's actually happening. Oh, my gosh. I remember the one groundbreaking thing that my therapist said to me, because I have panic attacks a lot, is she was like, do you keep your eyes closed during your panic attacks? And I was like, yeah. She was like, open your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually helps. Like, it actually helps. Like, if you're having, like, a breakdown, literally just opening your eyes and looking at the things around you is, like very helpful yeah that's what i do <laughs> i'm so bad at that i'll be freaking the fuck out yeah and my husband will be like what you doing <laughs> <laughs> just vibing yeah no i have a hard time with it because i really just like shut down and go into myself so yeah. like i have to do a lot of outside work and, like sensory stuff yeah yeah so, that's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is the mental health episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe but... we should put the crisis helpline at the end. Oh, yeah, the crisis helpline is at the end of the book. Yeah, you which want to read just... it off? No, it's for New Zealand. Wow. Um, but our fourth question, which we changed a little bit from the yes. guide that we got it from. Our fourth question is, in the end, Kira loved stories. She, see, she once told Corey... We could all do with more heroes and tricksters and storytellers. Um, how are the stories helping her cope? The original question is like, what story would you tell? Like, yeah, it was stupid. We didn't like it. This is really a, you have to do a discussion question in class. Yeah. And that's not what we're here for. No. But how are the stories helping her cope? Like, I think it's a bit of escapism to go yeah. into, like, a controlled story. Because uh, she also really likes superheroes. That's mentioned a lot. So, like, they're these extraordinary people. But I think it's also she wants to be saved because yeah. she's struggling to save herself. Yes. So I think that probably it is escapism, but also just probably giving her a sense of, like, comfort. Yeah. Because the art doesn't give her comfort. Yes. Some people, I get my shit out through my art. It's aggressive art, and it's ugly um, <laughs> but it's not like oh i'm gonna paint a cute little watercolor landscape no it's stabbing the just stabbing ah! the fucking easel um but i really think it is probably that's probably her hope because she does yeah. talk a lot and it's really sad she yeah. talks about wanting to be a superhero because she can't escape i think that's also she can't escape her own life yeah so, and even in the end, like, it's, like, from beginning to end, she, she can't escape her mind, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think that's also, she can't escape, like, the bipolar episodes. Yeah, my therapist also tells me sometimes a little bit of escapism is fine, but that can't be your only coping missing. Like, you're telling me I can't play Tarkov until, like, I feel less dead inside? What? <laughs> <laughs> I can't play endless rounds of COD just so I get mad at people in lobbies so I feel something. <laughs> yeah. I think also with the constantly having to have noise on. Yeah. That's, I do it a lot. So, some of my worst times are when I'm trying to watch something on the TV, but I'm also watching something on my phone. Oh my gosh, and also too. playing a game at the same time. I have to be doing two things at once because I can't just focus on a story. Yes. That's probably the ADHD, though. <laughs> Less of the, the other things. Um, yeah. But also, I don't know, having a schedule. Yeah, that's really that's important. That's a good coping mechanism. Yeah, that's what i really also working on is having a set schedule of things. Same. I'm bad at it on the weekend. Yeah. But also I only get like five hours of sleep before work. Yeah, that's why this semester I didn't want to have all online classes because I felt actually having a certain time I needed to be somewhere and actually it's leaving helpful. the house was helpful. Yeah. But not our... so helpful this semester because... 
they all had to be online. Sorry about all the tangents, but mental health hits, like, close to home. <laughs> Just a little um, too hard. Yeah. Our fifth question that we made ourselves that we're very proud of. Um, yes, yes. Is... Kira's paintings often allegedly predict the future. How did the hopelessness of the mine closing enable the town to see Kira as a prophet? I feel like our question was also a little self-explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is, but it's the best that we could come up with. So it's what we have. We're not professionals. So I think that's pretty obvious. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like you have to grab onto something. But I also feel like... Like, they saw her as a prophet because they didn't have the motivation to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. Everything that's happening actively could have happened with, like, these people just having their own motivations. It's almost like, you know, some people will get saved, but, sorry, not, I know, I always offend religious people. I know it's a problem. But after a doctor does, like, an operation and saves someone, everyone's like, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of the vibe that I get from this is people are doing things like mining companies are coming in and then everyone's like, oh, it was Kira. We didn't mention it, but Rashawn is the one who even brought his dad there in the first place. Mm -hmm. He was just like looking at geographical data because he wanted, he always wanted to go to Alaska. So it had not shit to do with Kira's paintings. No. It was Rashawn. Who brought the mining people to the town. Yeah. Like, he brought his dad And that's there. what started. That's what started Kira. Like, the whole thing with people yeah. thinking that Kira was saving it. But in reality, that's a reasonable thing to paint. They were in an old mining town. She probably was painting hope. But and, it wasn't a future predictor. And in her dad's office, he was looking at a lot of history of the mines, yeah. uh, geographical data, old maps. So she so had like, reasons to paint these things. Yeah, because I think she realized that was her dad's biggest hope, is but that the mine reopened. People fall into cults so easily. Yeah. Like, it's just a thing. We've talked about it before on the podcast, but I am very interested in Mormonism. I don't want to be a Mormon, but, like, the fact that people do that shit is fucking fascinating to me. (laughs) And, um, there's, I'm always so tempted every time I pass it. I'm like, do I want to go? Just to see what the LDS church is like. I'm like, I just want to go. You would get sucked in. But I would. I would. And that's why I'm not allowed to go. Because I, (laughs) maybe that's another coping mechanism. (laughs) I used to be very Jesus-y. Yes. Um, but it's so easy for people to fall into that, you know? Yeah. Well, I was thinking that maybe part of it, since Kira didn't have anyone to attach to, she might have been, like, low-key love-bombing people. Well, also, yeah, she was manic. So I think in the beginning, it does say she was happy. Yeah. So she was on that euphoric high. Also, there's this thing, there's egocentrism mm-hmm. that you get in mania. And I think that contributed a lot to it, too. People will literally see themselves as gods and think that they are gods in mania. And I think that was the beginning of it. But then she crashed. So I think Kira partially contributed to that, too, because she probably was telling people, well, like with the chant that they said. And she would say, tell me a story. And they would say, we will obey. Well, because if you give somebody that like very specific attention and then like sort of drop off with it. They kind of crave it more. Yeah, especially if they're in a manic episode. Yeah. So I think that it was partially Kira's mental disorder, and then also the town just every, like, people just easily fall into cults. Well, they said nobody moved in and nobody left, so, like, the town's just, like, slowly dying. Yeah. So they needed a hope, and that's what they turned to. Yeah. But that's it for our discussion questions. Now we have the Goodreads. Which I accidentally read, so I don't get to guess today. We no. just muy triste. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a three point three, slightly is lower, bad. slightly lower than I thought it was. Yeah. Okay, the, the last two books, yeah, and they had the same about rating. Yeah. The last one was better than the one before. I like the Lion Game. Yeah, it was good. I like this book, too. I didn't think that I would. I think last time we were like, ah, it's going to be a stupid wild ride. But no, I I like it. 
Yeah, most of the reviews are three stars, and a lot of them kind of fall in the same category as us. Like, I liked it, but it's, like, a weird gray area where, like, you don't want to like it. It's romanticizing mental illness, but also not, like, at the same time. I don't think that was the author's intention. No. All of the bad one-star reviews are, like, an essay. Uh, It took me a lot of scrolling to find some short ones. (laughs) So, Gina says, I really did not like this book. It was really bad. It was really bad. (laughs) I couldn't get behind any of the characters or the story. I couldn't suspend my my disbelief (laughs) over the resident's stupid reasoning about a suicide. Okay, it wasn't a suicide. It wasn't a suicide. She didn't read the whole book. No. No. Okay, no, that's a bad review. She didn't read the whole book. (laughs) The author seriously can't expect me to believe that a large group of people are all small-minded and would be this cruel to a teenage girl with bipolar. I just want to say, in middle school... (laughs) We talked about this earlier, about getting bullied in middle school. People are so mean. Yeah. Like, oh, she has depression. (laughs) (laughs) She's sad. People are mean. And also, again, the cult mentality is just, like, ingrained into people's brains. Plus, if you're very isolated. Oh, yeah. Like, there are no other people. Like, obviously, this whole small town probably does have similar beliefs, you know? Yeah. It's like they did see Kira as an outsider because she was different than them. Because, like, there's no new information coming into the town and there's even like a small like throwaway that people were mad she was even going to see a therapist in a different town because they she was talking about them they've always viewed outsiders as bad and so kira being different is not yeah like something that they would be okay with and i think that's why they felt betrayed by Corey and her family because they did leave yeah us Okay, and then the writing was also not good. I struggled to get through. The mystery thriller aspect was also very weak. Well, there wasn't really a thriller aspect too No, much. there wasn't. Not until the end. The only thriller part was when she was getting, like, choked out in the woods. Yeah. Kinky. Would not recommend this book. Do you have a five star? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find another shorter one star. Nah. It's okay. One is okay. One is enough. We we all know what the rest of this is. Take Isaac from Heroes. Is that another book? Make him a pansexual teen girl from remote Alaska and add a <laughs> hauntingly creepy story of her last months in death plus beautiful writing. And there you have Before I Let Go. So lovely. <laughs> that was a five star <laughs> <laughs> I thought you found another one star. No. That person. <laughs> Take a pansexual bipolar girl and put her in Alaska. <laughs> That's so aggressive. <laughs> I don't even know who Isaac from Heroes is. Okay, this is not in English. Why is everyone on freaking Goodreads have to be like an aspiring author of essays? <laughs> John Green? What? <laughs> okay, here's a. This one's only two sentences. Okay. I've got to say, probably one of the best books I've read this year. I literally could not put it down. Riveting. I will agree Riveting. with that. It is. It does. And I think that has to do with the way that the author writes it. I think that the author does a good job because. Yeah. The way that she forms it is, like, it's constantly rushed, but not in a bad way. Yeah. No, it's kind of, like, it feels, like, appropriately time-scaled, I guess. It does. And it kind of, it, the writing gives the feeling of anxiety and tension. Yeah. It's well-written. It's, like, the end of, what's it called? The grammar or whatnot. Yeah. But the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime does the same thing. um, Where, at the end of the book... When the kid is, like, getting super stressed out, um, the writing gets quicker. Yes. So, sometimes, when she wants the book to slow down, like, in Before I Let Go, 
there are more longer, complex sentences. But yes. when she wants the book to speed up, there are shorter, like, simple sentences. And, and I that, think that does add to, like, yeah. the timing of the book. Especially at the end when it sort of switches perspective to, like, a, the play. a play. And there's, like, way more flashbacks. It feels a lot more, like, too many thoughts at, all at once. Yeah. Kind Which of thing. I like. Yes, I do like the vibe of the book, though I do feel weird about the content. I just, it just doesn't I wish sit it was right. Less romanticizing. Yeah. Um. If the idea was to make you massively uncomfortable, go met, go met. Yes. But what would you rate this book on a dollar scale? One to ten. Like seven or eight. I'm at like a seven or an eight too. I think yeah. it's a seven point five. Yeah, I that's a lot yeah. of these reviews are like it's not a whole star. It's a point five. Yeah, seven point five is good. It was a reasonable book. Yeah. Do you know what book we're reading next week? Oh, we did talk about this, but I don't remember which one. Let me go find it real quick. <laughs> so our book for next week is *The Box in the Woods* by Maureen Johnson. And this is a book we've actually never read before. Yeah. So this will be new, new territory. For us. Yeah, new territory. <laughs> <laughs> well, that ends it for this episode. We'll see, see you next, next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.